Hi everybody, welcome back to another C++ lesson. Today we're going to be beginning our discussion of containers available in the standard template library. And so what I mean by containers are um, sort of things like arrays that allow you to handle a number of different, well, a number of objects that are of the same type or different groups of objects. So these containers available um, through the standard template library are sort of like super arrays. They can do things that arrays can't. So for instance, they can expand. You can remove elements right in the middle if you want to. You can get their size, things like that. Now the standard template library, since I, I've, I think I've mentioned it a couple times, but um, STL for short, it's a number of classes, uh, objects, whatever, that are available with C++. They sort of come bundled with C++, if you want to think of it like that. And the nice thing about things that you get out of the standard template library is they're optimized, they're tried and tested, and uh, they're very good, basically. They've been used for years and optimized, and um, they're often better than something that um, so for instance, I made that expandable array several videos ago. We have a video on that. And um, the containers in the STL are more efficient and better designed than something like that. So it's often better to use something from the STL when you can, because not only will that save you time having to design something like it, but it will probably be uh, basically one of the best designs that you could get. So there are a few different containers sort of for different purposes. The first and most basic that we're going to talk about is called the vector. And um, this is not the same as like a, you know, a two-dimensional, three-dimensional vector that you might have heard of in math class or something like that. It's, it's a different um, use of the word vector, so don't be confused. You do have to be using the STD namespace. And so you can just type out using namespace STD like normal, but I decided to do this to make it a little bit more explicit. Okay, so a vector is basically an expandable array. Um, that's the basic premise behind all of these containers that we'll be talking about in the next few videos. And so some of them are better for some things, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, the nice thing about vectors is that the way they work is when vectors expand their size, they expand in batches. And so in that expandable array class that I made several videos ago, the way that worked to expand was every time you wanted to add a new element, the the class would allocate a whole new array, pass in every member of the old array, and then also tack on the new element to the new array, and then deallocate the whole old array. If that sounds kind of, you know, inefficient, then that's good, because it <laughs> it is. So that's why it's better to use things from the STL. So vectors expand uh, not one element at a time, but in batches, which I'll show you a little bit more um, at the end of the video after I show you sort of how to use vectors, which is the most important thing. So to create a vector, all you do is type vector, and then in angle brackets you put the type of data that you want it to hold. So in the, in the same way that an array can only hold integers, uh, you can't have an array that also holds that holds integers and characters. It's the same way for vectors. Um, you want a vector of ints, that's fine. You can also have a vector of characters. Or you can have a vector of your own classes, like if you had a car class, or a motorcycle class, or if you had an automobile class, and maybe car and motorcycle inherited from that, you could have a vector of automobile pointers, which could either point to cars or motorcycles. But that's... Um, that's, I'm just mentioning polymorphism to reiterate that concept, but let's just work with integers for this video because I think they're the easiest to understand. So I'll just call it my vector. So it's totally fine to not have any um, arguments for your vector, and so this is basically just an empty array. But if you want, you can make um, other vectors. I'll just make a, a second vector and you can pass in arguments to the constructor. So the most useful um, thing that you can do with this is pass in two numbers, um, and the first number is the number of elements, and the second number is what the initial value of all the elements should be. So if I do 5 comma 0, that means I'm going to get 5 zeros in the initial array. 
And so I think this is very helpful. It saves you the step of having to do a for loop to go through and initialize uh, every value. But it sort of depends on the context whether you want to initialize the array to anything at all, or if you just want it to be empty waiting for things to be tacked onto it. So let's let's go ahead and initialize it with zeros. And so, like I said, the nice thing about these containers is that they can do things that arrays cannot do. So, um, sort of the most basic thing that they can do that arrays can't do is they can expand their size. And so, if you want to tack on an extra element to your array, there's a simple method for that. It's uh, you type the name of your vector, and then the method is pushback, and then you put in as an argument whatever you want the next or the, the new last element of your vector to be. So if we push back 10, the array will now be five zeros and then a 10. So it's automatically going to resize the array so it can tack on that last element. If you want to delete the last element, which is also something that you can do and it will automatically resize the array um, as it should, you use the method pop back. And so this will leave you with just, you'll be back to five zeros. And so you can push back a new element and you can pop an element off, sort of deleting it from the array. Now, one of the nice things, another nice thing that these containers have that um, arrays don't, is since they're objects and sort of they're not just working with pointers, they actually have members and things like that. Uh, there's a method for the size of a vector or of any number of containers. So this will tell you the size of the vector so you can do a for loop like this um, even if you don't know the size because you'll just get the size uh, from the method. So that's something that's, that's very convenient about these containers that arrays don't have. So if you want to assign a value to a uh, position in your vector or to get a value, it's actually quite similar to arrays. You just type the name of your vector and then use angle brackets. And so in this case, I'm going to assign the ith index or the, uh, to, well, yeah, the index at i of our vector to the number i. So this will make the whole array into, sorry, comment. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, do, uh, the same rule applies for vectors as, as it does for arrays, that the index starts at 0 uh, rather than starts at 1. So this, uh, what looks to us like the second element, actually has index 1. So that's just something to remember is also true for vectors. And so if you wanted to output the third element, um, it's just like arrays you type the name of your vector and then rather than putting index 3 um, well you do put index 3 if you want the third element but uh, it's going to output 2 since um, since that's the number that's at index 3 so don't get hung up on that too much if you're used to working with arrays then you understand how this works so that's how you access and um, assign values to the vector um, some other things that you might want to know, if you just want to uh, output the last element in a vector, you can always just do my vector dot back, and that will give you the last element. And so that's uh, more convenient than if you, I mean, the other way to do this is my vector and then index my vector dot size minus one. And so uh, in this case, my vector dot size would be five because that comes from up here, and so this would give you the index four, which is the last element. But so so that's I mean that not only looks ugly, but it's kind of it's just better to have a nice function to output it, and so that's what my vector dot back is for. And you can do the same thing with my vector dot front to get the first element. Um, now the nice you have to understand the difference between certain containers in the STL. What vectors are very good at is working with the very last element. They're good at adding on a new element, tacking on a new element, like this 10. 
they're good at taking off a last element like we did with the pop back and they're good at um, assigning a new value well okay they're fine at assigning and accessing uh, elements throughout the whole array but sort of the best thing that you should be using vectors for are when you're going to be adding elements to the end and taking elements off of the end and um, doing it that way. I'm not sure why these have accents on them. <laughs> That's pretty strange, but anyway, yeah. So if you're going to be doing things like um, deleting values in the middle of a container, a vector is not the most efficient uh, container for that kind of purpose. Um, and we'll get into that in the next couple videos. I'll go ahead and show you how to erase elements uh, from your vector. And the nice thing about the standard template library is a lot of the way that you do this for vectors is true for other containers. So the way that you do this is you have to understand that vectors and other containers like to use what are called iterators to um, reference parts of, of their of the container. And so the iterators are just a type of variable, um, but mostly you access them uh, using methods available in the vector class. So this is a little bit complicated because you're erasing from an array, but I mean the, uh, the commodity of being able to erase elements outweighs the uh, how complicated it might seem at first. So the way that you erase, say, the uh, third element from your vector is you, t you use the erase method and then do my vector dot begin plus three. So my vector dot begin is an iterator uh, that looks at basically references the first element in the array, and then when you add three to that, it will uh, uh, now reference the third element in the array. So that would be this one. So after we erase that, the array will look like sorry the vector will look like this. We will no longer have that second element. Um, now the other thing you can do is instead of erasing one element at a time, you can erase a whole uh, swath of elements. So we can erase the second through say the fourth element by doing uh, my vector dot begin plus two uh, comma my vector dot begin plus four. And so this will erase the second um, yeah, this will erase the second, third, and fourth elements. So now we just have 0, 4. And this will automatically resize and change the, um, you know, what gets outputted in the myvectors.size method and all of that. That all happens behind the scenes, so you don't have to worry about it, and that's what's nice about using these containers. So like I said, this is not so great for vectors, removing uh, like elements in the middle. They're best for removing elements at the end. And so that's just something to remember when trying to decide what kind of container you want to use. Um, so I, I said I would tell you about how vectors expand in batches. So let me go ahead and show that by just... Uh, I'll, I'll start a new section so we don't get confused with the output. And I'll make a new vector of ints. Call this new vector. And so this is just going to start off as empty. And then what I'm going to do is make a for loop that will, um, let's put in, let's add 32 integers to our array one at a time, and I'll show you how the, what's called the capacity uh, does not change, it does not go up by one. So let me just type this out real quick. So the size of our vector, I'll output that. And sorry, we do have to actually uh, push back i. So this is just tacking on one element at a time to the end. So it, first it's going to tack on 0, and then we'll have uh, 0, then it'll tack on 1, then it'll tack on 2. But every time it does this, we'll, it will uh, output a little bit of information. And so I'm going to output what's called the capacity, and this is different from the um, size. And so... This autocorrect stuff is really starting to bug me. But okay, let's let's finally do a compile here. Hopefully I didn't make any egregious typos. Uh, vectors, vectors.cpp. Um, let's see, my vectors. I must have typed that somewhere where I meant, yeah, 
Okay, that was there. And it auto-corrected. All right, there we go. Now we should be fine. Okay, so have a look at this. We're looking after this little line, but if you want, this is our output from the from the uh, other element. Sorry, earlier uh, exercise shows us that the last element is indeed four, and I'm not sure why it's saying the third element is three because it kind of shouldn't be. It should be two, um, but I'm I'm not sure about that. But I'm not going to worry about it. In any case, uh, this is the capacity. So you notice that the capacity is not the same as the size. And so the capacity expands by powers of 2, which has to do with optimization. And so it doesn't actually expand the size of the vector until it's completely filled. So uh, right after the size is 8, in, in other words, it has 8 elements, and the capacity is 8, it bumps the capacity up to 16, and then it doesn't have to reallocate anything until you get all the way up to 16 elements. And so this is something characteristic about how vectors work, which makes them more efficient than something like our expandable array class. So OK, that is all I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I hope this has provided some good insight into how to use vectors, uh, which is a great alternative to using arrays. And they're actually um, very very good at performance and pretty much the same as arrays even for just basic functionality so that's something that's really nice about vectors so I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video and it helped you uh, learn and um, I'll see you in the next few videos where we'll talk about some other containers that are available in the STL so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time